I guess the, the biggest challenge for me was what to hide behind. So I've been making self-portraits since 2009 where I'm always hidden somewhere within the image um, deliberately. So I you know, mostly used fabric, cloth, things like that in the past. So this time I wanted to work with a completely different materials, hence um, they're all paper. So I'm kind of hiding behind these paper screens, um, which I've attached to the wall and kind of managed uh, to get behind. So camouflage is a series of photographs uh, where I'm, you know, that they are self-portraits in a very loose sense, where I'm hiding um, in the images in behind paper, um, masks, and um, you see bits and pieces of my body here and there revealed. But largely, I'm trying to kind of blend in to the background or the foreground somewhat unsuccessfully. I'd been looking at it in terms of military camouflage originally, and um, that idea of this kind of pattern that um, you, know, you wear and you're meant to kind of blend into your surroundings, so also in the sense of what animals or birds do. Um, and in this context, it's, it's really, I, I actually, when I look at them uh, now in particular, it's, it's a, almost like a failure to camouflage. It's in the, in the attempt to do something, but the image really uh, captures kind of failure to do it. So if I think of, Camouflage is a form of hiding, a form of um, something that's some, somewhat deceptive. Um, so the work tries to do that photographically in line of, you know, what a portrait's meant to be. Um, but, you know, in terms of, you know, completely being camouflaged, it's, yeah, it's a total, a total failure in that context. So there's two things. What are you hiding? It's the body, but also what are you blending into? It's this kind of, I don't know, abstract painting as well. Yeah, the um, visual reference was, they were Ellsworth Kelly paintings, quite loosely based on Ellsworth Kelly paintings, that hard edge kind of colour field abstraction. Um, I, I remember you know, probably 20 years ago travelling to San Francisco and seeing one of Kelly's paintings and how clean and perfect um, and you know really how devoid of any kind of human body um, you know they were so in this in that sense you know I wanted to um, you know muddy that a little bit and insert flesh and insert a body you know, especially where you have, um, you know, the nipple or the finger. There's kind of, a, there's a, it's like a slightly rebellious urge. I, I, sometimes I think it comes from my um, back, painting background. That's what I studied as a student. And um, always thought that that's what I would pursue as an artist. Um, and so it's somehow that's always kind of present in my work. So it's, it's, it's something that's a little bit, um, I guess, it's a slight kind of jab at something. And especially, I think, in terms of that period in abstract painting, you know, there, there are all these, um, I guess, you, it, there's not a lot of women either. So to put, a, you know, the female body into what would be a colour field painting is almost kind of, you know, the opposite how I think about them. I mean, the other thing is that they're also the antithesis of a colour field painting because firstly, they're photographs and secondly, they're quite small and intimate. And a lot of the feedback I've had when people have seen them in the flesh outside of, say, dust super paper is, oh, wow, they're really small. I imagine them quite big. And I think it's because of that painterly reference that you imagine them to be large scale. But in fact, they kind of mirror the scale of the body um, and they're quite intimate and they ask you to come in. And the surface has been lost as well. Yeah, exactly. So you don't get the brush stroke and you don't see the paint. It's, you know, completely flat in that sense. Are they all you behind them? Yeah, yeah, they're all me. So the interesting thing is the process. And when I look at them, I, you know, that I can, I recall the difficulty in shooting them because I'm shooting them myself often, mostly in my kitchen. So, you know, get home and remove the kitchen, push it all to the wall and set it all up on, 
um, set the coloured sheets up, um, sticky taping them to the wall and then trying to somehow focus and get into the frame at the same time. So it's usually, a lot is left to chance, so I can't kind of preconceive that my hair's going to hang out and my arm's going to slightly poke. I mean, they, they're like controlled experiments in that sense. So I control a certain amount, but a certain amount is kind of left to, to chance in that sense. I think that's a really good point to talk about, as you were saying, the context of this series in your wider practice. practice. Um, yeah, what's interesting is that um, I, I was thinking about this recently because I guess 10 years ago I was working in quite a different way. I was photographing um, anonymous people in public space um, quite covertly. So in the sense that as the photographer I was hidden, um, I, would, I was trying to kind of photograph people, take portraits of people without their awareness. So when I came to photographing myself, it was interesting that I couldn't, I found it very difficult to face the camera from a self-portrait perspective and, um, you know, always felt this kind of instinct to hide behind something, especially the face. Um, so yeah, in that sense, I think it's interesting that it complicates for me what I was doing in the past in that I would try to photograph people um, in kind of moments in public space where they were completely engrossed in something and they were unaware of the camera. Yet at the same time, in pointing the camera to myself, I'm unable to kind of look at it. So yeah, hence I've, I've stopped photographing people in that way because I find that there's a kind of, there's a problem with that. The relationship between subject and photographer becomes very complex and muddy. Um, so it's interesting to consider the relationship between subject and photographer when you're both and how as the photographer I might kind of uh, seek some kind of disclosure, something to be given um, for, you know, for the sake of the, the image, the portrait, but then at the same time I want to, as the subject, completely hide. So hence you get this kind of hiding on the subject's part, but a slight revealing in order to kind of give something to the image. The idea of these bits which you've chosen though, they're um, disconnected from the body now, so they're kind yeah. of almost, they're cut off, they're isolated. Mm. As you're thinking about it, as you're making it, what were your relationships to the various bits you were choosing and mm. kind of the idea of the body which you're dislocating? Um, I guess the, the body parts that I chose to reveal, um, it, it, it really depended, I guess, from image to image. The one with the eye closed, um, that's interesting because it's, you're looking, as the viewer, you're looking at someone who's not looking back. And so it sets up a relationship there in, you know, in relation to photography and what it is to kind of point a camera at someone. Um, the looking and being looked at. And then with the, with the eye open, that's a completely different relationship because the eye is looking straight at you. Um, and I think there's something kind of confrontational about that image. With the belly button, the finger, the nipple, um, and the hand peering, you know, there I think I mean, they're much more playful, I think, than the, the eye. Um, the belly button, the, you know, there are all these things that you can kind of imagine, like they're, they're holes, I guess. So the belly button's a hole that you almost could, you know, stick your finger into. But then there's the finger that is stuck through something. So um, I was playing around with that idea. So what recedes, what comes forward? So the finger's kind of coming out, the belly bu button's going in, the nipple's coming out. Um, with, the, with the ones on the black background, um, I think something entirely different is going on there. They're much more sculptural. They look much more digitally kind of constructed, although they're not. Um, they're so flat that you almost don't know what you're looking at. So in that sense, I think it was a much more of a, um, uh, you know, there were kind of decisions made based on form. So the form that the paper made in relationship to my body. And I guess I just wanted to kind of 
make in those ones, in the black ones, I wanted to make my body as kind of flat and as neutral and nothing as possible um, under the weight of the paper. And the formal elements of the drapery as yeah. well, just now flattened. Yeah, with the, with the one with the nose, that's, um, that's one of the most interesting ones for me because it um, references one of the, well, the first photographic work that I'd made in 1999 called Operation Nose. And um, a few people who, who know that work have said it reminds them exactly. In, in that sense, I was casting noses and they were photographs, portraits of people with plaster casts on their noses. So in this sense, it's, it's my nose revealed, which is kind of a funny thing in the context of our family because we're all a little bit obsessed with our noses. Maybe it's a Lebanese thing. But um, yeah, it's just kind of saying, well, here it is. But it's not me, it's just a nose.